In a world where shadows hide behind the silver screen, one team dares to reveal the secrets. Dive deep with paranoid American Tommy Truthful and the rest of the Truth Mafia as they decode the hidden messages in movies we thought we knew. From ancient myths to modern politics, from gematria to the darkest corners of the occult, prepare to see cinema in a whole new light. Welcome to Conspiracy Cinema. This is called Fair Use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And we got an amazing episode prepared for you guys today, guys. Uh, It's an oldie, but a goodie. This is on the level of They Live, a cult classic called Society. And there's a connection to 9-11. We're going to get into it. This was a recommendation from my brother from another mother paranoid american what's up brother how you doing today what up y'all and look uh, i'm here i'm dressed but i'm just gonna keep my camera off so i can show yeah yeah i don't blame you yeah man you you texted me right away and you were like what did you just make me watch (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was bizarre dude it was so bizarre and um i'm just gonna jump into it real quick so uh the first thing i noticed well it, it, okay, so when it starts out, right, they're playing basketball together, and the first thing that caught my eye, just like in the uh, They Live, I seen the orange and blue coding go together in orange and blue. I didn't put it on here because there was so much I was already trying to connect with this, but orange and blue equals 56 guys matching mind control, right? And we covered that with the movie They Live. If you remember, the opening scenes had the a syringe on it, and uh, our boy uh, Donut pointed that out when we did the They Live decode. So with this one, um, there's also a connection to 9-11. Society in Triangular Gamatra equals 9-11. And the release date over on F Movies was June 11th of 1992. But I seen there was a trailer out in like 89, right? Yeah, this was a movie from 1986, I believe. The original movie? Yeah, I think I think that's when the theatrical release was. Okay, so yeah, I seen there was a connect. Um, I'll show it on here because I got it the screenshot pulled up. But um, on F Movies, it said June 11th of 1992, which I went from that date, which is 6 11, the inversion of 9 11. And from that date is exactly 111 months till 9 11, the date that 9 11 happened, which New York is, is 111, mandatory 111 witchcraft 111 of satan mark and then the 86 uh makes sense because i i had an 86 connection um, right, let me let me just make sure it so it, it looks like uh on imdb at least the official production year is 1989 oh 89 89 yeah okay so maybe they did a remake or something on that and well, also there was definitely some re-releases after the that. theatrical because i mean this this was like ahead of its time for its time too yeah so i think that was the re-release the june 11th connection to 1992 um and then you know the the there's a whole connection too so first of all you got the 45 and 22 right there right which equals 67 we know human sacrifice is 67 and if the re-release came out on 611, that's the inversion of 911. Society is 911, and it being 111 days from that date until then is very interesting because New York is 111, mandatory 111, and sat- satanic mark is 111. And in the movie, uh, they hold him down and stab him with the needle. Remember that part, bro? Yeah, that's that's a good needle though. That's one of the the good ones for you. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So they hold him down and jab him up with it, and it, it it just reminded me. So he's sitting in the before that scene takes place, guys. He's sitting in the psych uh, shrink's office, and he goes to eat this apple, 
and there's worms coming out of it, which I don't know why. It just gave me that whole vril, um, droning feel at that point right there. That's what I thought of anyways. And on the screen, it said it's no more than a phase when he's biting into this apple with the worms coming out of it. And it's no more than a phase is 86, which 1986 was the year that National Childhood Vaccine Injuries Act came out in 86. And then, boom, they're jabbing him up with a needle, you know, in, in, in a scene where he's like, I have rights. I'm almost 18. And, um, yeah, it was it was it was pretty crazy man um i mean there were there was some orgies going on there they were eating eyeballs uh, just very very it's, it's hard to summarize in one sentence for sure yeah yeah it's definitely hard to hey, summarize in one can sentence you, can you pull that last slide up that you just had something that just blew my mind man i just it's so the very last sentence um, NCVIA's purpose was to eliminate the potential financial liability of manufacturers. That was it. Like that, it's crazy that the, the National Childhood Injury Act really wasn't about the injuries. Kids. It was. It was just about making sure that nobody gets sued. <laughs> That's yep. crazy, man. That is what it was, and I'm glad you pointed that out, brother, because that's what the whole act was all about: is making sure no one got held liable you know so whenever i see that 86 connection to anything i always that's where my mind goes all the time especially when i'm watching a show and they're jabbing him up and i'm like oh whoa there's that whole connection to needles and then uh the 9 11 thing just so, just society equaling 9 11 blew my mind and so i i instantly had to look into that i'm like whoa I wonder if there's a connection there, you know, and, and then that would be nine years and three months too. And remember on nine 11, what flight happened? Flight 93, which was on its way to San Francisco. And we know 93 is a big number connected. First of all, to Saturn, Saturn is 93. If you're looking in, um, I believe that's the English ordinal cipher. Let me double check real quick. It's so, also the, the greeting. It's like the Aloha of Thalema. Yep. Thalema. And I tried to tell donut that the other day, um, when we were doing a live, cause he brought up this ring with the 93 and I told him, I was like, brother, that is a representation of Saturn right there. And, in 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 Crowley's followers, they'll be like, yo, what's up 93? Like it's a greeting card to them. You know, they, they use it. It's a code. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hello nice. and goodbye. Yep. So we had flight 93. I mean, look at George Floyd. George Floyd died on the 93rd Meridian. You know, they use this 93 over and over and over again. They start talking about Jesus Christ, the 930th chapter in the New Testament from the earth to the moon is allegedly um, 93 million miles. We know that's a lie. And then uh, there's a lot of uh, belief that Jesus's real birthday was 9-11. So um, whether well, that's, that's a new one for me, I haven't heard that before. Yeah, whether it's true or not, who knows, right? Um, there's so much lies out there in the world, period. But then the 9-11 memorial, you know, that whole connection is connected to Saturn and the black cube. Uh, it, it, oh, bro, did you see the the 9-11 uh, memorial jumper? No, man, I'm dude. <laughs> oh, bro, you're, you're missing <laughs> out, man. There's so much crazy stuff going on. So with what's going on with Israel and Palestine, we just had some 33-year-old man jump into the memorial at 9-11. Here, I got to pull this up for you, bro, before you even get into your presentation. We got to talk about this. So, dude, you, I want you to see it so bad because you tell me if this wasn't straight mind control, paranoid American. How they got this dude to do this, I, I don't know, but it was crazy. And guys, come over and check out this blog I did on truthmafia.com, Understanding Chaldean Numerology and Its Origins. Trust me, it will blow your mind. Why I like Chaldean, we have the, we have the purest database for Chaldean Gematria on the whole internet. There ain't no one that has a higher database than us. Um, we're building the Latin one in real time. Another one of my favorites there, Latin. 
but Chaldean is one of the purest. And the Chaldeans, guys, they didn't even use the number nine because nine is so divine. So it's a divine number. So they, they left it out, period. You know what I'm saying? And there's a connection down here where I show you the cipher, which is one through eight. And one through eight, you add it up, what's it equal? 36. Another reason I pick Truth Mafia. If you look at my Facebook, the Tommy Truthful 3691, it's Tommy Truthful 36 is the handle name of that page. And um, this is why everything's going on with Palestine and, 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 and um, Harp right now, why we're having all these unnatural disasters, because it's the 36 year anniversary of the Patent of Harp, which happened on 8 11 of 1987 and then it's 36 year anniversary since israel created hamas and yes i did say israel created hamas because they did and um you know so that that 36 connection which is a huge number in chaldean gematria and this is the one the elite use this is the cipher of the source code of this matrix that we live in it, it, this is the one you want to learn. If there's one cipher you got to pick, trust me on this. Learn Chaldean. And it, A, I, J, Q, 4 is all one. See that? All They all equal one in that cipher. Then you got BKR, which is all 222, two, two, adds up to 6. CGLS, all threes, adds up to 12. And then this one I found very interesting because there's a whole connection to life path number fours, guys. And this whole death code, like life path four equals 187. And um, if you look into the number four, it's the only number that there's a fear of. It's called tetraphobia, fear of the number four. And in Asian cultures, four is one of the most bad luck numbers. It's very similar to the, the word death in Asian. So I, I find it very fascinating that DMT is 444 in that cipher, the DMT, and that's a spirit molecule that we get um, when we are in REM sleep. And, you know, Paranoid American said is some people believe that it's released when you are uh, die, but there's not enough evidence to back that up. Yeah, I, I want to believe it, but so far I, I haven't found anything that lets me truly believe it. Right. So, you know, I will point that out. But um, Moses talking to the burning bush, the acacia bush, rich in DMT, you know, paranoid American takes the fun out of everything. He has to be so. Well, I think it's still fun, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you and Do Donut told me about you guys making um, his Illuminati book. And he's like, dude, he fat checks everything. But it's good because you make it um, thorough, you know. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of taking the fun out to some people but like uh to me it makes it more fun to know all those intricate i don't know because i always think that it's the the human element that makes it interesting to me like it's well, somehow it's less interesting if it's all just aliens all the time like if the answer to every damn thing is aliens then it it seems less uh impressive but when the answer is always like yeah person did that i don't know i, I find that so much more interesting yeah. And I mean, if you're, if you really want to know the truth, then that you, sometimes you got to be like, okay, well, it would be cool if DMT was mass released when we die, but until we know the truth on it, I want to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, the, the other one, I'll just, I'll break another one really quick and shots fired. If anyone's wanting to disagree in the comments, but if you ever seen the study where people say that they would meditate and, and speak mantras while water was freezing and then like, the water that they were thinking love or they were playing yes, classical music. I, it would be hearts. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I've actually did a whole decode on it and showed that I couldn't find no evidence because I, I, I wanted to believe it so bad. Well, that if you speak well, love to the water, it, it, it freezes. When you put it in the freezer, it freezes perfect little ice crystals. And then if you speak hate to the water, it freezes all distortedly. Right? Exactly. We're, we're talking about the exact same thing. It was like a Japanese scientist, I think. And here here's the part that takes the wind out of those sails. Because when I heard that, too, I remember thinking, like, this changes everything. That's basically proof of some higher order. Like, if, if just me thinking or saying something out loud can change the crystalline structure in a consistent way, that would be mind-blowing to me. So I looked into it. 
because I wanted to see exactly how you could do that. And really what happened is that they didn't take record of which water they were standing next to when they were doing like all the love versus the hate. So they right. just froze a whole bunch of different stuff together. And then afterwards, they looked at the crystal structures and then decided, oh, well, this one that kind of looks like hearts, that must have been when someone was thinking love. And this one over here where it's all like jagged, that must have been hate. So there was yep. really, yeah, like the science it was a good taken control out. group, right? It wasn't, they should have had a better control group. They should have, and me, maybe we could do that experiment sometime. Where we well, actually, I, well, that's the point. That's the whole point here is that when you actually do the experiment, you're like, oh, well, that's not as interesting. You know what I mean? Because like the, no, uh, no, thinking I, love I mean, doesn't actually make heart crystals. That would be cool. But when it doesn't, then it, I don't know. It's it's less interesting when you're disproving stuff that sounds a lot more interesting. Well, we don't know if it doesn't. Right. Because they just kind of guessed. So we should do what I'm saying is we do a controlled experiment where we actually do the experiment and, and I mean, speak, well, speak love and have a control group, to, two totally different groups where we play a love frequency to the water and then freeze it and then play a, a hate frequency to the other water and freeze it and see if we have any um difference because that would be cool to find out and plus i mean the human body is 70 water so if that is the case you know but i'm they, down to try it. i'm saying like i'm at like 99.9 percent .9 in disbelief of that though you oh know, yeah because like would... they're they, they didn't have a good control group they just guessed you know what i'm saying if you're just gonna guess oh this one must have been the love and this one but you can't prove that well, so even if we were to do that and, and we didn't have the result and we said, well, here's an example of, of it not working, you're always going to have someone like, oh, you didn't do it right. You didn't do this thing. So you can get caught into that loop forever, which is usually why it's way easier or it's, it's better, I would say, to have something that proves the claim instead of something that disproves the claim. Because like you, like you would have to disprove it in an infinite number of ways, whereas you only got to do it one way to prove it. Right. Well, it would still be a cool um, experiment, just like 666, right? Everybody thinks this is an evil number, but it's actually a sacred number that they took and perverted, guys. It, it has to do with um, the six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons in our DNA. So when carbon-666 is combined with other elements, particularly phosphorus, it initiates a chemical reaction that gives rise to DNA and RNA, Phosphorus, known as Lucifer in Latin, is the light bringer or the morning star. Phosphorus exists in our DNA. So, you know, it, they, they connect that to this whole demon thing, but really it's not. And, and the elites don't worship Satan anyways. They worship Saturn. That's what it all goes back to. Saturn, that's what they're worshiping uh, uh, which is a planet, which is a sigil that they're putting energy into. Now, this 9-11 jumper here, right here, this is hilarious. 33-year-old memorial jumper, right, for 9-11. For so we have all these 9-11 situations taking place right now. And um, check this out, Paranoid American. So I've never oh, been here. What's, what's in the middle of that thing? Is that like a hole that just falls down? Yeah, dude, it's that memorial I just showed you. Um, where the two, I'll show you it again here in a second. All right. After this, okay. but yeah, this is where the towers once stood. So let me show you this. I'm not going to put the volume on, um, cause I don't want to get copyright flagged in the first part I show look dude just falls in here bro so he, first of all, he jumps down, which it's like a 30 foot drop down into there. He's leaking blood coming out his head, uh, in, oh, in, like in, at this point, he's already hurt. Oh, he's already hurt. Look at his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already hurt. And then he lays down. He starts looking. And the title of it is Man Falls Into the Abyss. And he said he did it for his father. Look at this, bro. And that's like 30 foot down into 18 inches of water. What the hell are they blurring out right there? The His blood. They can show him. Okay, whatever. Yeah, like the I know, I know. Crazy. That was the mainstream media that did that. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't me. Everybody yelled at me for it. I'm like, I didn't <laughs> do it. I didn't blur the shit out. They did. You so know, did, it, I, did, his, did he lose his dad in the original attack? 
So that's what they said. And he's a 33 year old man. Like, come on, dude, they either mind controlled this dude or some people are like, oh, he's a fallen angel. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. But this is the what it looks like. It's the 9-11 Memorial, the Black Cube of Saturn, which we know. That, that right there is what we're looking at right now is the 9-11 right. Memorial? Yes, sir. That's what he jumped into. Dude, I thought you were showing me a picture of Mecca at first. No, no, no. It's all that Black Cube of Saturn worship, brother. And that's what he jumped into as we have Palestine and Israel going on. And did you see where they dropped leaflets to Israel and told them to get out? Or they dropped leaflets to Palestine and told them to get out? And That's then actually one of the origins of, of comic books, at least as, as propaganda. They used to drop um, comic books on people to tell them what to do, uh, especially for anyone that didn't know how to read English because they could understand the comic books. Right. They did it in North Korea a lot. And um, yeah, the black cube in Mecca in the occult is called the hyper cube. It represents mind control. That's why the TV is a black shaped cube. The graduation hat, a black cube. It's all connected to mind control. In Judaism, they wrap it around the crown chakra and the arm. In Islam, they're walking counterclockwise around the hyper cube, the Kaaba, which mirrors the rings of Saturn. And in Christianity, you're praying to a cross, which is an unfolded cube. Okay, it's all tied into Saturn. But um, yeah, so they tell these poor people, they drop leaflets on Palestine, tell them to, to get out because they're going in, right? And then they bomb the convoy, bro. The convoy that was leaving with innocent children and people, it gets bombed. So it's like, man, you guys tell them poor people to leave. And then they, they try to leave. And they're trying to say, they blamed it on Hamas, right? Oh, Hamas did it. But Hamas was created by Israel 36 years ago. And, and guys, I even got, I'm working on a video right now showing proof of that. And I'll be uploading it on all my platforms. You'll be able to find it on truthmafia.com by tomorrow morning. Give me till about 11 p.m. tomorrow morning and that video will be up and it's going to blow your mind showing evidence of it they create the problem then they create the solution and we see this black cube everywhere we see it in freemason shrines we see it in the hermetic order of the golden dawn with crowley and his little sex magic cult you know um that's what they really worship saturn not no satan right S satan comes in many different forms santa saturn uh, it's, it's the same entity. But yeah, I thought that was very fascinating to say the least. And then, oh, hold on. There was a whole 11 connection here because this happened 11 days after. Let me find out. when. Why did I put that? 33-year-old man in Manhattan plunged into the North Pole 9-11 Memorial Museum, New York City, Monday did after. Did he survive this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He survived around 1.30 p.m. Damn. Right. Okay, so here's the connection. Uh, the two reflecting pools, or wait, wait, wait a second. Why did I put the 11 there? there? There's a connection to this 11 number um, with this article. I think I forgot to put it there, though. But um, it was 11 days after something when this article happened. Hold on, let me look, guys. I'll probably remember. I was just wondering, too, when this dude fell down that hole uh, into one of the, the tower uh holes right you think someone else fell down next to building seven um i don't know <laughs> that's interesting i don't know bro october 9th is there i think the connection was hold on let me see uh date calculator let me see here or oh, this might be the, a different article i'm thinking of I think I might have just been showing the whole 11 connection on 9-11, flight 11, hit two 11s in the sky in the 11th city. Oh, yeah, I am thinking of another article. I'm thinking of this Chucky one. That's why I have the 11 on my mind. Okay, so that was this article. Hold on, let me show you. Okay, right here. This is why I have the 11 on my head, guys. So Sling and Stone was talking about uh, demonic sightings being spotted by these police officers, right? And I brought up that we just went into season three of Chucky, the series Chucky, and Mexican police cuff crooked demon doll Chucky. <laughs> so, so 
look at this. This is the funniest story ever. And they arrest the dude and the doll. And this article came out on September 23rd, that 923 date, that Osiris date that we were all uh, talking about. And you even got the 11 on the wall there, which I did not notice until just now. And that 111. So from that day until... Let me see here. Okay. An article of Reuters on September 23rd of 2023 updated the same day, shed light on the unusual event, this event, Osiris Day 923, and... There's a span of 11 days between the publication of this article and, okay, so this article releases, right, on 923, September 23rd, and then 11 days later, the new season of Chucky comes out. 11 days after this story. About Are you like, watching Chucky? Yeah, 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 it's fire. You you like it? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, like, I didn't like the second season too much, except for the very, very end was great. But like the first season was good, second season kind of sucked except for the last episode, and then this new one I'm I'm really liking. I think yeah, this is I'm the third, it. right? Yes. And what's Chucky all about, bro? Where a, con a consciousness, yeah, voodoo, a consciousness of a serial killer is transferred into the Chucky doll, right? So that demonic possession. Now the eleven connection. Why they use this eleven guys on nine eleven? Um, we had, first of all, 9-11, 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. The Twin Towers physically resembled the number 11, two 11s in the sky. Flight 11, which had 11 crew members, was the first to strike the tower. Each tower had 110 stories, which is 11. Um, New York was the 11th state to join the USA. September 11th of 2001 is the 254th day of the year. 2 plus 5 plus 4 is 11. After September 11th, there is 111 days remaining in the year. So there's the 111 connection with society in the re-release in 1992 on June 11th. And then words like Pentagon, Shanksville, and New York City each contain 11 letters. We invade where? Afghanistan, which had nothing to do with 9-11. Afghanistan, 11 letters. Uh, 2001 was precisely 11 years before the Mayan calendar. And the Mayans referred to the 20 years before the end of their calendar, 1992 to 2012, as the time of no time. The 9-11 attacks occurred nine years post-1992 and 11 years prior to 2012. So 9-11 again. And I got this whole theory, Paranoid American, bro. I think they're resetting time. I really do, bro. I think they're using shit like CERN and keep resetting time back to 2000 before 2012. So we're like stuck in this time loop. And that's why we're seeing all these glitches in the matrix and the Mandela effect and all this crazy shit. Why are they doing this? Because it, it might have to do with um, the world ending. You know what I mean? So they're, they're just keep resetting it back to before it ends. That's my little theory on it anyways. All right, they're, they're trying to prevent end times because they know it might not go their way. Right. So, yeah, with their whole, you know, being judged and and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's this whole connection to what's going on in Palestine, too, guys. Um, let's take a look at this, this 119 connection, which is 9-11 in reverse. So September 15th is Prophet Muhammad's birthday. Now, from the beginning of this war with Palestine in, in, in um, Israel from October 7th until Sunday, September 15th of 2024, Muhammad's next birthday is 11 months and nine days. Well, Islamic Jihadi movement is 119. Muhammad, the messenger of God is 119. And then Muhammad, messenger of God is 107. And on September 15th, Days left in the year, 107 days. And 107 is the 28th prime number, which Quran is 28 and Torah is 28. So we see the connection there. Shout out to my boy. His link's right there on Twitter because he uh, actually had that breakdown. I tried to cover it on uh, mine and Donut's members only show, but my brother Donut was really stressed out 
with uh, everything that was going on. I get it. He's Jewish. You know, it, it affects him differently than us. So it, it's probably hard for him uh, to talk about it. What about Pet Cemetery? Before you get started on your breakdown for Society Paranoid American, have you seen the new Pet Cemetery Bloodlines? No, nah, dude. dude the, the latest thing that I've seen was uh, the Stranger Things that we watched last week. <laughs> Or that, so or that in society. So yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't seen any of the the new stuff yet. Well, you know me, I'm a movie head, so I'm a movie buff. I'm I'm binge watching. I just binge watch guys. Usher, uh, the fall of Usher. The uh, what's it called? Hold on, let me make sure I get the name right because we're gonna do this one next week. Me, Ani, and Paranoid American: The Fall of the House of Usher. It's a new series that came out on October 12th, the day before Friday the 13th. It starts out with a 1776 plug. He's drinking this liquor that's like a million dollars a bottle. And he's like, yeah, this liquor was bottled in 1776, which 1776 is the year the Illuminati was formed by um, Jewish Jesuit Adam Weishaupt. And 1776 was also the year a miracle was founded, right? And right now we have Pluto's return in 27 degrees Capricorn, the first time since 1776, the rise of the Illuminati, the rise of America. That's why we're going through all these rituals right now. It has to do with Pluto's return. And we've seen every time Pluto comes back, it destroys empires. That's why America will fall. And I think it will fall before Pluto leaves on 4-8 of 2024, which has to do with the upcoming eclipse. You guys seen that eclipse we just had in, in over Corpus Christi, Texas, right? So Corpus Christi um, has to do with body of Christ, what it means. And I'll get into that in just a second. But this new series or, or new movie, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, it was phenomenal, by the way. Um, at the end of it, an hour and 21 minutes in, that he's sitting on the porch and they're panning out on this scene where you see 638 on the door. The first time they show you the address, which Antichrist Beast is 638, Royal Lineage is 638, uh, The Secrets Codes is 638. And guess what? Next year in 2024, Klaus Schwab's next birthday will be exactly 638 months after he started the World Economic Forum. So there's a whole 638 connection. And what came across the screen right there is sometimes dead is better. Sometimes dead is better is 76 matching October 23rd. Now, 76 guys, remember the Georgia Guidestones blew up on 76, right? Bomb is 76. That was George Bush's birthday. It blew up 18 hours after CERN broke the world record in energy, which 18 is six plus six plus six and check this out from the release of this the day before palestine in 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 um israel go to war october 6th until october 23rd which i think there will be a false flag event maybe someone will die that day um is 17 days and kill is 17 so it's a big number we see um, and I believe I was right about October 7th. I was right about October 9th, the 322nd anniversary year of, of Skull and Bones. Um, I'm batting a high 99 percentile this year with my prediction. So, you know what I'm saying? And, and Israel, guys, is Isis, Ra, and El. Isis, the sun god, Ra, and the Canaanite El, which is Saturn. Just had to make sure I point that out. But go ahead, um, brother. Paranoid American. Sorry for my little tangent. 33 minute tangent, too, guys. You see that? <laughs> 33 minutes. You, well, know, you planned that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I planned it. <laughs> and that shit, brother. All right. So I've got kind of like, uh, I can't remember the last. Oh, yeah. They Live um, was the last one where it was just like a movie that I legitimately love and Me just kind of went through some of my favorite scenes out of it. So this one I didn't just pick I didn't pick my favorite scenes necessarily because the the concept of this movie is wild. So this is going to be a full spoiler alert up ahead because it's going to be impossible to talk about what happens here without kind of giving away some of the surprises. So I really do like this movie and I suggest that if you haven't seen it that maybe you uh you go watch it first and then come back and watch the rest of this. 
Yeah, and shout out to Roddy Piper, who definitely said it was um, a live documentary before, you know, he passed away. So, um, And honestly, I think this one might be a documentary, too. Yeah, this one's crazy, guys. If you haven't watched this one, Society, you got to go check it out. It's bizarre. And it's billed as a satirical body horror movie. But I would say that, I mean, the, the satirical part is definitely just because they do a lot of over the top stuff but like deep down man it, it feels like it's it's kind of real so this is my favorite cover of the the film which kind of gives away a little bit of the big payoff but just by looking at it you wouldn't really understand what's going on and this guy i hope i pronounce his his name brian Usna, but he's also known for a whole bunch of other movies that you might have seen reanimator is one of them from beyond which is a uh, hp lovecraft movie he also worked on honey i shrunk the kids which a lot of people have probably seen uh and then just like a lot of different sort of practical effects style movies so he uh he also put his kid i think and he, he worked on silent night deadly night um volume four which is also a really crazy series man. if you haven't seen any of those we 100% need to watch those in December because it's all about like witch cults taking over Santa and Santa being evil. So oh, anyways, wow. yeah, we're, we're going to have to get into the Silent Night, Deadly we'll, Night. We'll definitely do that one. And shout out to Jay Dreams out there, guys. Go check out Jay Dreamers on YouTube. Our boy's in the, um, he's in the chat right now. Our brother, me and Jay got a, a, a podcast coming up together. So it's going to be really cool calling. Show. Yeah. Yep. We'll definitely have you. I'll be the one. <laughs> I'll be like begging to come on that one. But Jay, Jay's welcome on this one anytime. Oh, yeah. We love Jay. So we got a here's society. And I'm going to give you just like a rundown of what the plot is as I go through all this. So you got you got Billy who's on the left and his best friends on the right. But but Billy, he just kind of doesn't feel at home. He's been raised his whole life, but he never feels like his parents are his parents and his sister's not his sister. And that the entire town that they live in is weird. So it's kind of like that typical Goosebumps, Erie, Indiana style story. But this is just such a weird uh, clip here where his best friend is telling him, you'll probably end up assassinating the president. Yeah. Like, like, and, and he says this out of like nowhere. It doesn't even feel right. Very bizarre. And then they're wearing the number 67 between the both of them, which human sacrifice is 67. You know what I'm saying? In that scene, after he says that, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't know if I should bring it up or not. I'm like, man, is there a connection there? And well, you know, there's definitely a connection because he's also the outcast here. He's like the poor one, um, like, the, like the bumpkin almost. They all look at him like that. And that reminds me, like, he's almost telling him, you're going to be like Lee Harvey. You know, you're going to be uh like a stooge and you're gonna be the one that gets blamed for something that horrible that happens and that's kind of the role that he ends up being destined to play even if he fights back against it yep so and then this is just a, a random shot but it right as this is the house that he lives in and where his parents are at and like they're rich you know they're, they're filthy rich they actually live in beverly hills so they're like right outside of like the hollywood area and they've got this kind of like it's not exactly Masonic, but I'd say like a Masonic style pillar on the left with the little globe and oh, the, uh, it's definitely, the clock. It's definitely Masonic. That globe, if you look into the symbol of that globe there, it represents power. And remember, Queen Elizabeth, right before she died, she walked up and put her hand on a freaking globe thing. And then three strands of pink DNA lit up in front of it. You guys remember that in the comments? She walked up, put her hand on that globe. It represents power that that symbol there that's why that's why and then if you notice the obelisk on the right as well what's that clock set on is it six does that say six it looks like it's at six o'clock yeah which you know is a whole nother connection to saturn the sixth planet from the sun yeah and, and honestly like I, I almost wanted to zoom in on that obelisk and see exactly what hieroglyphics it had but i decided to step back because there was so much uh other like bits to go through to this so yeah. we, we also got, again, like think of Billy, this guy right here is the main character, but think of him as the, like the fool in the tarot deck. He's the one that's like wandering around innocent, doesn't really understand how the world works, but he notices things that are kind of like 
out of the ordinary, but he's also putting himself into these situations that he's not necessarily ready for. So one of those is he's running for class president. Uh, again, this, this like you're destined to assassinate the president and being related to politics. It, it's really weird, especially as you go on and see some of the other references in this, but he's saying um, this is when he's running and he's just talking about that. There's like a conspiracy in the town, maybe. And in that scene too, brother, if you pay attention there, Okay, so Billy's coat, look at the color on his coat, Ye yellow and blue. And then the guy sitting behind him has a yellow and blue striped shirt on. Remember that? The dude sitting down, that was um pretty much, I think he's like the judge or something. And, and up behind him, it says uh, Beverly Hills Academy on the wall. Well, yellow and blue in English standard, guys, is 1717, right? And guess what happened in 1717? That was the Mother Lodge, the Grand Mother Lodge in England uh, was formed in 1717 that year. So we see this yellow and blue color code. We've seen it in Stranger Things. We also seen it in um, uh, the look at the Freemasonic logo, their colors. What is it? The yellow and blue. That's their color code. So the, the, the picture I'm talking about with him right there, what Paranoid American showing um, there, there's a guy actually. Uh, behind him sitting there with the yellow and blue striped shirt on too it was one of my scenes i i was gonna break down but you you already got that brother so yeah that whole yellow and blue connection man it's it's heavily connected to freemasonry and then here's this one spot where he goes in to talk to i guess it's like a school counselor slash therapist and the the guys he's talking about we're just one big happy family, except for a little, uh, and I just won't even say the word, and psychosis. And this is, again, it just comes like out of nowhere, and you don't have any ramp up to this. And it just sounds like a weird phrase from like an like a old movie. But you could say the word. We're past seven minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so it says, we're, one just, we're just one big happy family, except for a little incest and psychosis. And he yeah. says it like it's a joke. But he's not joking about it. No, he's not. And that's them elite families, man. There's a lot of blue in it, too, which reminded me of the Blue Lodge and Freemasonry. So well, much and the blue, blue Bloods, because, again, this is all like the upper end of society. So these that's are the Blue right. Bloods. Yep. And at the end, and, and another interesting aspect here is you got this rich Blue Blood therapist that's fascinated with these masks and African and Asian masks, uh, which if you ever seen the movie, the mask, there's also like a really good deep dive on that. We could get into at some point, but he, the therapist is basically telling them just like, you know, you thought there was a conspiracy. You're just being paranoid, you know, listen to yourself. And uh, we got another scene where I just love the, the color aesthetics here, this nineties, like that, that ultimate warrior style. But Me they're too. actually run up to his sister at some point and they spray her with, you know, suntan lotion. But really, they're screaming at her, die alien scum. And they specifically target her out of all the different people on the beach. So th this just reminded me of that one concept that has come up before about how children, even little little shits like these ones, that uh, they basically can see through whatever is out in the world has been like shaped by we were calling saturn before right but, yep. but once you're like a certain age that you're innocent enough that you can actually see this it's like you have the the they live glasses built in almost and that color on the boy's nose on the left that's the color of the transgender flag oh are you, are you throwing shots at that little kid no, shout out to that little kid. And they're spraying <laughs> that stuff all over the girl's face, which kind of simulates, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a funny scene. <laughs> yeah, so she has it all over her face. There, There's very definitely heavy sexual undertones in it, to say well, the and, least. And speaking of this one, so he goes and sees this other dude that's supposed to be, like, go, going crazy. So they find him at the beach. And he's saying, like, he's got evidence that his family is up to something really strange. So he's playing back a recording that the guy's holding in his hand. He said that he recorded it in secret about Billy's parents. So the, the parents are saying, you know the schedule, first the dine, then copulation. 
someone your own age first, then with your mother and me. He's talking to the daughter, his yep. sister. So he's sitting here thinking like, why are my parents saying this this weird stuff directly to my sister? And uh, again, like you haven't seen anything in the movie as you're watching that any of this makes sense. This is like the second time that this incest narrative comes up with no explanation. So much truth in that, though, because that's how these elite bloodlines really do get down. That's how they keep their power. They keep it in the family. Jacob Rothschild clearly said that. He said, yeah, we married into our families to keep the money in the family. I mean, that's a direct quote from him. And and taught themselves their own language and everything, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, okay. The Phoenicians, really? Well, I mean, uh, technically the Phoenicians made a language that everyone then ended up using. But yeah, originally it was just kind of for their own use. But what I mean by that is like, um, okay, so like Palestine until 1947, it was called Palestine. Then Jacob Rothschild, you know, gets that for America to enter World War II. And there's people that says, oh, that's not true. But when you look into it, it seems like it is pretty true. And um, then, then before that, it was called Canaan. But ain't them the people that's running that land now? I mean, I they're like descendants of the Phoenicians, right? Yeah, but it, it's really hard to pinpoint when you say the Phoenicians, because the Phoenicians started in like where the Canaanites were at, but right. it spread through the entire Mediterranean. So when right. you say Phoenician, you're really talking like people that were there before the Romans and the Minoans and the Greek and all of them. Like before they were around, the Venetians were sort of the ones that were spreading their culture so that all those others could kind of like build on top and thrive on it. Before that, it was just like a bunch of nomadic cultures that would constantly be building up into city-state wars, getting into battles, losing, and getting wiped out of the books of history. Uh, cool. But then when the Phoenicians came around, they were just so incredibly, you know, I mean, we're still using their alphabet today, right? That's yep. how incredibly impactful they were. But once they hit it, it was like, man, we better get on board with this. And they weren't against that either. But then it became a maritime merchant culture. But then uh, this weird thing happened where... If you're out on the boat, right, your whole life, and you amass all this wealth and knowledge, eventually you're like, I'm going to go and buy a house and just kind of like settle and not have to worry about being at sea all the time. And then all of a sudden your priorities change. Now you don't care about taxes to, to keep up the maintenance of boats and like keeping up the Navy. You want more about staying on land and pastures and then becoming more of like an agricultural type person. So like you would start out Phoenician but then you would settle down and then you and all your offspring would all kind of no longer be the same Phoenician that most people think about. Like, and then you just kind of become your own little thing. So that I mean, it's so when you say like Phoenician, Phoenician is such a broad, broad term. It's almost like saying American. Yeah. Santos Bonacci said it's them or seeing yeah. <laughs> that's who santos calls them shout out to zach russell <laughs> and and look he calls them uh them sabotage sabotean frankist uh, or he was calling them all kinds of shit man it, he I, and the guys did he disappear he said if i don't do a video for a couple of days they got me well last time i checked he hadn't did a video in two days so i hope he's okay i hope they didn't get him but when they do get him he is going to jail Dude, you yeah, cannot. Yeah, you're not going to catch me. <laughs> you're not going to catch me saying any of that. No, the stuff he said. If you said, catch me saying that, then I've definitely been MK Ultra, 100%. Yep. Yeah, they, me too, because I would never say stuff like that. <laughs> uh, even though maybe I might think certain things, I wouldn't say it because you can be arrested for that and you can't entice violence like he was doing. Although we might, if it, it doesn't matter if we agree with it or not, guys, you just can't say it. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that type of stuff in society. You will go to jail for it. Like he threatened a sitting president and I'm, I'm talking, he threatened him for real, for real. So they were going to find him. They don't care if he's in Mexico, Brazil, uh, non expeditional state. They're, they're coming for him. And um, it's, it's interesting. Jay dreams. Jay dreams is in here. Jay, go look on his YouTube real quick, brother. And tell me if he dropped a new video lately. <laughs> it's uh, a, it might end up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, man, because I, I looked Friday and I had I seen nothing new from him and it had already been two days. So I think they got him, man. I think they got him. 
And he he's like, you know, me and Jay was talking about this. He's like, yeah, I'm, they're going to remember me a hundred years from now. And, and my name will be the one that started the revolution. And me and Jay's like, dude, no revolution is going to start. These people are so dumbed down. No one is going to go do shit. Like you're, you, you saying that did nothing. It didn't entice no one, nothing. All, only people did is laughed and you got yourself in trouble, brother. That's it. Unfortunately, society has been so dumbed down, hit with fluoride so heavily, you could tell them that the teachers at school are molesting and, and hurting their children and they still wouldn't rise up. They could see evidence of it and would do nothing. I mean, as I'm long as the baby's sitting, it's still free. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone out there. We know some of us will, would definitely um, not allow that to happen, but I'm talking the majority of the people, 99% of these people, they are so programmed with the mainstream media and the mainstream narrative. And they'll be like, Oh, it's okay. They're just teaching our kids sex ed. It's all right. You know, <laughs> nothing wrong there. I, I hope he works through whatever he's working through, man. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. Poor dude, man. He, yeah. he's, he's working through something. He's working through something, I guess. <laughs> he might have a lot of time to work through pretty soon. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I mean, he seemed to have a breakdown. Um, I heard from several people that he went through something and some dude uh, ripped him off or some shit. And then he just, he never admits that publicly to people, but, you know, some dude scammed him and um, he broke down after that. Like he lost his shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it seemed like he spiraled out. There might have been some, um, uh, drugs involved. I don't know. I don't know. I'm good enough to say that for all sure. All the best spirals do involve drugs. I'll just say that. Yes, all the best. Right. All the best viral videos do usually involve that. So let's just pray for Santos Bonacci. I uh, hope he's all right out there. That's all I'm going to say. And, and you were actually. I mean, this is actually a pretty good segue. As as much as that sounded like a complete tangent, this is a perfect segue into this exact next slide because you were talking about what you can and can't say out in society. And this is exactly what, when he goes back and he talks to his therapist and he's saying, look it here, here's all this evidence I got that my family's basically performing incest and they're about to do it like very soon. It, his uh, sister's going through something called her coming out party. And that's basically when I guess you're presenting to society that you're ready to, you know, join and like leave the family and join the rest of society. So here, here's his therapist saying, you have to learn to accept society's rules. And if you don't follow the rules, bad things happen. And then he follows that some people make rules and some people follow the rules. So the right. implication here obviously is that, you know, Billy has to follow the rules and he and the other guy gets to make the rules. Right. Very bizarre movie, man, this movie. So then he goes and sees, like, the hot girl at school, essentially. Uh, but she says this thing to him, bro. She says, how do you like your tea? Cream? Sugar? Or do you want me to pee in it? And then she, like, goes on to do something else. And it's so casual. Like, she's not saying it in a flirty or, like, a, like a lusty way or anything. Like, she just kind of throws it out there as another option that he can pick. Uh, and I, I mean, he notices it, but it's so it's so weird, man. Where did it come from? The whole spirit cooking connection is what I think. You know, where they 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 do that, dude. They put fluids in certain things and eat and drink it, and it's 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 about lowering your vibration. Um, you know, there's there's things where they talk about how they get in um, contact with these demon entities or these interdimensional archons, whatever you want to call them. And they'll sit there and defecate on their self and meditate. And it's to lower their vibration and get lower on that frequency. I mean, just crazy stuff, bro. <laughs> Are we saying archons drink pee? I don't know. Maybe they do reptilians, archons. I don't know. There's something going <laughs> on with it. Dude, that whole Abramovich thing. And yeah, I mean, there's something definitely there with the elites. hundred percent. Man, I th that's we could work on that. It's a T-shirt or at least an insult. Yeah, <laughs> definitely like shit-eating shit archons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a, a good um, shirt. I made some stickers recently too, bro. 
that I got to show you some of yeah, my. We got, no, we'll have to collab, man. I'm telling you, once, once, uh, yeah, the things I are coming. I want to do some Santos Bonacci quotes. No, nah, dude, I want to stay. I want to stay away, bro. Let, let the I'm gonna let the man work through his his shit. No, no, I'm thinking I'm doing me a Santos Bonacci sticker. Wait, <laughs> I, I got yeah, yeah. I got a, a clip of him on on YouTube where he looks out of his freaking mind, and I'm gonna put some of his 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 best quotes on there. <laughs> I don't want no smoke, bro. He he said that he's smarter than Pythagoras and and Socrates <laughs> and Plato combined, and I, I don't I want know. smoke from someone that's got that kind of knowledge. He said he's the reincarnation of Isaiah and David. Combined. Yeah, do you, do you want smoke from David, bro? No, I'm cool. I better leave it alone. <laughs> I, I don't want no smoke. And and another thing too about this this girl here in this scene is that she is acclimated to rich people, like she's part of society. Whereas Billy, again, is is one of the few people that's not included. Him, his best friend, and that other dude that did the recording, they're not really part of society. But this chick is, and that's probably why she says that so nonchalantly, because that's what like the, the upper end of society actually takes as normal. And that is what's, you know, oh, you don't want cream, you don't want sugar. OK, I know what that means then. And then she goes and pees in the coffee or whatever. Uh, and then here's the guy that apparently recorded the audio of Billy's family, you know, talking about this weird like initiation ritual and he dies. But. When they go to actually look at him in the coffin, Billy puts his finger like through the dude's cheek and he's like, that's not him. You know, they're like there, there's something weird going on here. It's almost like it's a shell or like another like a body or like a stand in. Um, and they don't really expand on this a whole lot, except that you do find out the guy is still alive. Spoiler alert. And this was some kind of a stand in. But wow. I'm not sure if this was like a body or if it was like a complete fabrication but this was just to to make everyone in town that wasn't part of the elite think that this kid died instead of just disappeared. Wow. Which we probably see stuff like that on the world stage in real life. You know. Shout right, out and, to and again, man, like this movie's called Society. So it's like, here's all, like they're kind of beating you over the head with the metaphor here. Right. 100%, man. <clears throat> Lesser magic, bro. Revelation of the method. So he so he comes back out after he sees this guy at least die or, or has disappeared now. Uh, he still thinks he's dead, but he doesn't know what the hell's going on. And he goes back to the speech where he's going to be running for class president. And he says, they tried to tell me about the society that keeps um, to kill to keep its existence a secret. So this is why the, the guy ends up dying is because he, he gave him that tape. Um, and then they basically, he basically just like, uh, loses the favor of everybody in town at this point. He sounds like a complete raving paranoid maniac. And even though he's right, no one believes him that, or they're already in on it. So that, like he's preaching to the, the people that don't want to hear it anyways. And then at some point he gets drugged and he doesn't care anymore. And he says, even like, uh, calm as hell but he's like i'm not paranoid all my fears are real i'm gonna have to sample that because that's like the coolest phrase ever so then he goes back in and the uh the party's about to start so this is another link to it's not just high society it's specifically hollywood this movie is talking about the machine of hollywood and even more specific than that like the high society within hollywood and this dude who was kind of the therapist the whole time. I think he represents like your introduction into the movies. Like here, that, like the couch that you would go on, like the therapist couch, maybe that's the casting couch of some kind, but he says right. there's no, there's no business like show business. And then he, he elaborates that you have to be born in the society and that they're not from outer space. They're not aliens. It's actually just a matter of good breeding. So we're talking about, again, like that, that incest is about royalty uh, and that it's maybe not even aliens. It might have just been that there was a bunch of different species on the planet and that some of them kind of separated themselves and became isolationist so that they could just continue breeding and make sure that like the bumpkins didn't get any of their DNA. So that's it's such an interesting concept that they play out somewhat subtly and then it starts getting overshadowed by this dude. So this dude walks in and he's kind of like the one that runs society in this little town. 
And here's the another reference to you know politics and Washington. So we've got the Hollywood Washington connection, which is one of the the deepest forms of magic, in my opinion. And then bam, all of a sudden, <laughs> here here's the dude that had the camera. They pull him back out and they say, okay, he he's not really dead. We've had him here the whole time, but th- it looks like they start undressing each other, but they start to like meld into each other like they all just form one big mass of arms and legs and everything and this dude's not part of society but they're forcing him to join society and we're talking in a very literal way like he his body literally joins the rest of everybody else's bodies to the point where like faces are melting into other people's uh bodies and it just becomes like one single solid mass of everybody that's in society it becomes like a super organism basically and this is where they're talking about the rich have always sucked off low class like you like you know this this uh version here they're actually eating a poor person like they're absorbing everything about him in a very uh physical and direct and literal way but it's also supposed to be like this metaphorical thing where you know the rich are feeding off of the poor and then <laughs> this one too, when, when you see this guy here, you can't see it in this exact angle, but there's a, a beauty mark that's on his cheek that I think it's getting covered up. And right when they, they start this process, this old guy mentions how much he likes this guy's beauty mark. And after they, they finish turning into this big ball and they emerge as normal, you know, human shaped entities again, now he's got the beauty mark on his face. Uh, and this was just like a, a wild concept that you can actually like steal somebody's physical properties by merging with them and then like absorbing all of them and sharing it around with uh, with like the rest of your little your little cabal. And then this was a kind of just a funny line because, again, it's like an 80s cheese movie. And he, this guy runs up and there's a couple that's that's in like an upstairs bedroom and he knocks on the door and they say we're changing. And he's like, oh, really into what? Because they are shapeshifters, right? They can they can turn into any sort of shape they want. And there's a few other scenes that I didn't want to take pictures of because they had like some nudity in them. But it shows in multiple times. Like he he walks in on his sister in the bathroom and she turns her body around. So like her chest and her butt are both facing the oh, exact same way. And then it happens again too. They're in bed and like this girl like twists her body completely around so so not only can they meld into each other but they can shapeshift in any form that they want um and then this guy finally is mentioning that they've got lineage dating the julius caesar and genghis khan and he just kind of like lists off a whole bunch of different people that you would know from history books and then finally i just wanted to note that billy in the movie his name is bill whitney but in hollywood he actually went by billy warlock and I just thought that was such an interesting that the, the one guy that is supposed to be not in on it, like the fool, you know, the ignorant one, he's actually a warlock. Of course he is. The warlock, Billy Warlock. That was his name. That's his that's his stage name that he went by in Hollywood. And he's been in other movies under the name Billy Warlock. But he, they just happen to call him Billy Whitney in the, the movie here. Wow. But yeah, his real name is Billy Warlock. And he didn't do a whole lot of other movies outside of horror. That's very... (laughs) That's a funny connection right there, bro. And you also right here, this kid, Jason Conan uh, Yuzna, that's the director's son. Oh, is it? I think he's one of the kids that that says uh, Die Alien Scum, the ones with the, the paint on their face. I think he might be one of them. Because it's Jason and Jason's friend. Oh. And which is also kind of interesting be- that Jason's friend, his name is actually Jason in real life. I don't know. <laughs> it's stupid little like weird intricacies like that. But uh, it, it just stands out. Oh, yeah. I know they do this for a reason. You know, my boy at Numbers Don't Lie is a new channel I just put up on truthmafia.com. He said how, you know, he was talking about Carl Jung's work. And how they have three archetypes, or no, no, my apologies, eight archetypes used throughout all Hollywood. The same eight characters, the same eight archetypes. So, very, very interesting, to say the least, right? 
Yeah, it's like uh, Joseph Campbell's work in The Power of Myth, where he talks about the hero of a thousand faces. And I don't rem I remember all the Jungian archetypes, but it's like the uh, the That's... wise old man, mentor. Um, and then you've got like the hero and the anti-hero and the villain. So check this out, bro. We just had a ritual, right? Nine, here's the 93 guys, 93 rushing yards with the guy that just collapsed, the Bills player. And uh, look at the ambulance, 261 on the ambulance, okay? Oh, really? 261, huh? So 261, take back America, 261 in the Latin cipher, matching Apollo. Apollo 261 we just had with the changelings. I am Apollo, the sun god. And this is the coming of the Antichrist, Apollyon. Now I'm going to show you a little connection here. Two numbers you want to learn about with this 261 number. And that is 29 and 32. And I'll show you why in a second. But Nephilim. Nephilim. Oops, spelled that wrong. My apologies. Nephilim is 32 in the Chaldean cipher. Antichrist 29, right? And how do we get 261? Well, 32 times 29, which is 261, the number of the damn ambulance right there. And let's not forget, Son of El is 32 and 261. And it all ties back to Saturn, God of Time, 261. Saturn, with everything going on with Israel. It's all Saturn. This is a massive Saturn ritual. Another one. So we have Saturn ritual after Saturn ritual after Saturn ritual. I mean, it's kind of comical. How they think we're that we're this dumb. You know what I mean? Like people ain't catching uh, what's going on here. Boom, 261 on the ambulance. And I mean, if you look through this article, I'm just glancing at it for a second. So I, I, someone in the comments brought it up. I went and looked it up. They said 261 on the ambulance. So, you know, I go, look, there's that 22 number. Just like how we started this out where he had the 22 on his shirt. 22 is the master builder number. And what's this year, guys? It's the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. Yeah, it's the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. And, you know, Bill's play. And I'm not big into football at all. But this will be a trending story. Bill running back, Damon Harris, taken off of the field in ambulance after scary neck injury. Scripted by the numbers. I mean, this shit. Just like I'm telling you in basketball, I know this sounds crazy. And you're probably going to be like, Tommy, you're tripping. But there's something up with these damn basketball hoops. Look into the magnetic basketball. Look into that, guys. I'm telling you, sports are scripted as shit. Yeah, are they really out there playing a game? They're they're probably tackling each other and stuff. But in the end result, uh, it's always predetermined. Who's going to win? What the score will end up being? That shit always is predetermined. I got a, a theory on that too, but it's it's only like half-assed because I really don't care too much about sports, sports outside of like the, the symbolism and stuff of it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I almost look at it like the same way a casino would operate where they might not be in control or want to control every single slot machine and every single table, but they absolutely take control over like how many jackpots are given out and they might be able to control like who ends up getting that jackpot. Uh, so they've got some control over it. Oh, hundred percent they do. And Bill's Mafia, look, Bill's Mafia, which we clearly see, hashtag Bill's Mafia, right there. Bill's Mafia is twenty-seven. Now this ties back to their Chaldean cipher, the purest cipher I taught you guys about. I just did a decode in that Chaldean cipher, kind of showing you a breakdown with this whole how to use Chaldean gematria. And twenty-seven is a huge number, guys. Rituals twenty-seven. The 27 Club, all these famous singers that die at the age of 27. And when you scroll down here, look at this. Chaldean equals 27. 
Alien Scribe is 27, which had to do with the Blue Beetle and the Black Goo took over him, remember? And then Big Pharma is 27. Well, Element 27 is Cobalt, and Radioactive Cobalt 60 is used to treat cancer, the connection to Big Pharma, and then uh, the Atomic Weight of cobalt is 58, right? Well, Lamba equals 58 and Agenda is 58. And, and remember, Lambda was, they had the SARS Lambda variant. And this gets into black goo, programmable matter, Agenda 2040, the whole immortality technology that's connected to big pharma, the black goo this third strand DNA and cobalt is heavily used in batteries. And what's a battery do? It animates something. It brings it to life connected to their smart cities, their smart grid. And, and you want to know something guys where all the fires happened, especially in Maui, guess what the ground has a lot of cobalt and lithium. Yeah. Go research that cobalt and lithium, which where all the fires happened, British Columbia area, mass amounts of cobalt and lithium. So, you know, they wasn't going to let them take that out of the ground in, in, in Maui. But now that nobody lives there, it's burnt to the ground. They can easily go in there and abstract cobalt and lithium right out the ground, which they need for their smart grids and their smart cities. And now they've opened first. They were taking our videos down for saying that they were going to build a smart city there and fact checking us. And now they admitted in an open council meeting that they're building the first smart city there. So there you go. They're building smart cities right where they were taking us down for even mentioning that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's comical. The, uh, I don't know. I've, I've brought this up in passing, but I wanted to go on like a, a real quick tangent on it. Cause that word mafia where it said Bill's mafia, and this is truth yeah. mafia. The, the word mafia itself has like a really interesting history behind it. And uh, it, it's hard to pinpoint exactly because the word is mutated and come from so many different places. But mafia referred to like a cave, like there was a, a series of caves outside of Marsala, like, you know, chicken Marsala outside of those those caves in Italy. The uh, the actual name of them was like Maha or ma Mafia. And that ends up becoming where Giuseppe Gerbaldi and his red shirts hide and giuseppe was a dis, um not a descendant but he was a follower of mazzini and mazzini comes up a, a few different places whenever you're doing like the the illuminati and the freemason research especially between the 1700s and 1800s mazzini is apparently the one that takes over the reins from albert pike now i believe the source of this is actually leo taxel and leo taxel was a liar and he and he did it on purpose out of fun like he he intentionally was writing all these like he was rise. like a battle rapper that was coming out and just like making the horrible accusations just to get a rise out of people but it worked really well and we still repeat it but but regardless of all that mazzini and giuseppe um gibraldi they're the ones that are connected to this word mafia so it's either because they came out of those caves or it's because it's it also represented um, I believe an Islamic word for shade, which was like mafia. And then there was something that came on the tail end of that where Mazzini was responsible for the mafia and that the actual letters M-A-F-I-A -A, represented uh, something that, that translates in English to Mazzini authorizes robberies, fires, and poisonings, which wow. was uh, Mazzini autoriza furti incendi and avalamenti. Um, and that Whoa. so that the actual acronym for the word mafia was like the rules that you were allowed to live by, but it was talking about Mazzini being at like the head of all of this. That's interesting. It mafia and Chaldean is 15 matching CERN. It's also that 15 uh number, which is the reflection of 51, and the Illuminati was formed on 5 1. You know, we see the mafia heavily in control of the street gang, it's like the street branch of the the vatican right because that's what it is really the street arm 
of these papal bloodlines, of these these powerful families like the Orsinis, the Colognes, the Borgias, the Medici. Yeah, these are the bouncers because <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't have the guy that's like uh, like wearing all of the the church garb be the one that's bouncing people you know in and out of town, but you can have his brother do it or his cousin, yeah. his cousin it's, Benny. <laughs> yeah, you can you can have. <laughs> Right, that's my son's name. You can have Vincenzo. My son's Mario Vincenzo. Uh, you can have him do it for sure. So yeah, I think there's something to all that. And uh, guys, I'm telling you right now, you should look into another thing before I forget. Look into this Star Wars comet. So there's an article talking about the 2024 upcoming eclipse. You're going to be able to see this comet they call the Star Wars comet. And I'm, I'm working on a video about it right now. And it, it has two wings coming out of it. It looks exactly like what they describe Nibiru as. The winged alleged planet. Which I think the real Nibiru is coming from inner earth. I think it's it's the pink sun from Shangri-La. Right? From inner earth. That's what I think it is. But they show you this depiction of it that looks very similar. See it has the wings, the horns. And why they named it that is because um, they say the comet, um, it, it, it looks like the Millennium Falcon, the spaceship piloted by Han Solo in the movie franchise Star Wars. It has horns like horseshoe shaped that make it resemble the Millennium Falcon. And they say it's because the volcanoes are blowing up on it. That gives it the horns, right? But if you looked into... The Anunnaki and the wings connected to Nibiru, what they call Planet X. Um, you'll see it all throughout the ancients. They had this wing disc show up in the sky. And every time this wing disc would come, guys, death would happen. The floods would happen. Uh, so I don't fully understand. I don't believe it's a planet on an elliptical orbit with the sun at all. I think it's from inner Earth or the Phoenix phenomenon like you know, uh, our brother Jay talks about the plasma apocalypse. Archaics talks about the Phoenix phenomenon. There's many different theories on it. And see how it shows this winged, this winged sun look? That That's that's what it depicts. That's what the ancients called it. So whatever it is, whether it's a technology that they're using that shows up, and then destruction comes. We've seen it with Dagon and his crew when they showed up. We've seen it with Dinky and Enlil. So that should be worrying us a little bit. When and, and shout out to Jay Dreamers because he had another interesting take on that that same shape where it has to do with like plasma uh, interacting with with this dome. Yes, shout out to Jay Dreams, guys. If you don't know who Jay Dreams is. Check out his YouTube. He has some phenomenal stuff over here. Um, he's a member of the Truth Mafia, you know, one of the capos, because the elites have their little mafia, so we had to build our little mafia. And, um, you know, uh, let me show you his channel right here. He's got some phenomenal stuff over here. He does his own movie, Truth and Movie Decodes. He's got his videos over here, his lives, amazing website. He's revamping his website right now. So he's got a, a bunch of really awesome uh, content. Here's one on his Nibiru th theory that he gets into a three-hour breakdown on. And it's just one of my favorite topics. And the cool thing about Jay is he's, he's breaking it down from a flat earth perspective. He's showing you the connection to whatever this event is and ties to flat earth, right? So I, that's why I loved his theory with it originally, and, and it's just so phenomenal. And then he breaks down all the movies that show you. Um, I know that movie right there, Jay. That's, that's um, oh, man, what's it called? Geostorm, right, where it froze everybody. The UN got froze instantaneously. I did a video on that one. But, yeah, he's got a, just a ton of stuff. The rise and fall of Tataria, this Tatarian empire, which could have been one of these global resets that we go through. The plasma apocalypse. And and some seem like they're more, more advanced, or, or should I say more advanced, more um, destruct. Some bring more destruction than others. Some are by fire. Some are by water. 
So this one we're getting ready to come to now is going to be a fire one, right, Jay? We're going through the fire one. So it's going to be like the movie Knowing. And that's what we're seeing right there with this. So hi, definitely look into that, guys, with this whole winged freaking thing. They're saying it's the size of uh, Haley's Comet. So it's pretty crazy. And you'll find Jay's work over here on Truth Mafia as well. Right here. He has his own channel over there. My boy Paranoid American's got his own channel over here. And then on anybody's channel, guys, if you want to find their own personal stuff, like say, let's take Paranoid American, for example. You go over here. You pull up one of Paranoid American's posts, which he does all the videos with me. He does a bunch of other ones. I got a, a, like three new ones from you. I got to put up here too, brother. I don't usually put up the ones we do on um, Conspiracy Cinema because I already put them up usually a week before you. Yeah, so. yeah, you do. I, I like I like giving you a, a head start, but I'm also uploading them. And then sometimes mine will get dinged even if yours don't. So. For real? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how YouTube works though. Yeah, it's very bizarre. It's the AI. It has to be. But um, so if you scroll down, so it'll give the whole my AI does this. My AI writes a summary and a transcript. And then you scroll down below that and you'll see see this right here. Talks about Paranoid American. And then it has links to his Patreon, which if you try to find his Patreon, they like to hide it and put this bullshit on there. Yeah. You must be 18. <laughs> So that just tells you it's really good. When they want to put that on there, that means it's exclusive. And it's that super fire. cheap. Yeah, it's that fire. He just came out with his Frazzle Drip Funhouse, guys. Oh, my Lord. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, my Lord. And the link is right there. And then, you know, here's his website. See this link? You'll click on that. Boom. It'll take you to ParanoidAmerican.com. Yep. And also at the top, another link to Frazzle Drip Funhouse. Right there. The new one. And guys, I'm telling you, it's hardcore. I seen the whole thing. And um, wow. I don't know this guy's mind how it works. The artist did a phenomenal job on this, bro. He really did. And um, I don't want to spoil it, but it, it, let me just tell you this. It, damn, speaking of Wing Suns, shout out to Wing Sun Comics. Yeah, you know, well, that's a synchronicity well, right there, man. A little synchronicity for you. I didn't even have that planned. But um, yeah, man. So this kid gets taken down and they uh, sacrifice him. And then they're trying to harvest his uh, thrill oxide, which look on occultdecode.com if you want to know what thrill oxide means. And, and we have all the words there so you can use the code names and not get pinged by the algorithm. And his thrill oxide seeps into this bear. This matronical bear that just starts taking everyone out. It's it's phenomenal. It kind of shows you like um, the underdog comes back for revenge. And that's why I like it. Because, it, it, you know, he's um, coming back. Oh, I see the, the $666 there. <laughs> Which again, 666 has nothing to do with the devil. Has to do with the phosphorus in your DNA. And, and that's and, that's the goal here too is to that's the minimum amount to raise in order to get this thing to print which is just shy of maybe 20 copies so we'd sell 20 more copies on this page than this actually gets to be printed and that means that some i mean the deep down that means that there's going to be a comic book shop somewhere out there someone's going to walk by and notice how the word frazzle drip is all the way at the very top so even this is in like the fourth or fifth you know row in the comics the word frazzle drip is just going to be standing out in the comic uh, aisle in yep. public. So, I mean, just in order to make that happen would be so awesome. And it just would take 20 more people to sign up for this. So go sign up, guys. Show some love, man. I'm going to share the link right now in the, in the comments. And I'm going to post this up on my uh, website tonight in, in, un, under this video. So when you go on Truth Mafia to watch this video, the link of this will be in there. And look at this. Here's a little more synchronicity, guys. 36% of 666. Well, you know, 666 is the 36 triangular number. So we're at 36% of 666 right there. And um, yeah, man. The link's right there, you know. You can also, uh, let me share that for you, brother. I'll share that to all my platforms real quick. I didn't know you, 
you launched it. You're supposed to tell me, remember? No, I I, I sent you on. I, this sounds so silly, but I sent you a link to the Indiegogo on Instagram to post on your Facebook. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you gotta just. You should just always send it to my phone. Like, hey, Tommy, here, bro. Uh, could you promote? Right, well, this? Hey, well, I got a direct connection to the man himself right now. So yeah, please. Please share this one on, on Facebook specifically for whatever reason, these comic projects and the, the ones that kind of have to do with this stuff, they tend to do way, way better on Facebook. People just I'll, like share it around more. Yeah, I'll share it on my big Facebook and, and we'll watch this. We'll leave them a message. Hey, guys, go support over here. We got to raise at least six hundred and sixty six dollars to get this comic to print and expose what Miss Frazzle Drip has done. So get that name out there to the public to bring awareness to it. There you go, brother. I hope that'll help out a little bit. And let me copy that. We'll throw that up on Facebook right now as we're live. You know, I always got you. Always try to look out and help people out. Oh, yeah. and, and I know your followers, too, are, are some of the ones that are the most into this kind of content. And they're the most well-informed since they follow Truth Mafia. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely... They know what's going on, right? I need your help. Put that and there. this has got to be the only Frazzle Drip related comic book that's out there. And you can, I mean, I, I'm going to use the, the word a little flippantly, but like you can trust that the Paranoid American version of this one, it's it's for like the good side. It, at least in that it's it's got lots of, text and artwork and symbolism that's there to expose what's happening while also just being an enjoyable comic book like if you were to pick this up not knowing anything it would still just be an enjoyable read and you'd still get a laugh out of it but if you also know all this extra stuff you'll notice all the little inside uh sort of references to names and research and places yeah so it, it, we're not doing it for the evil side you know what i'm saying and even with the 666 connection like it doesn't mean what you think it does, first of all. And that's just the way, you know, uh, he likes to make things fun to learn. And, and so people take it the wrong way sometimes. I mean, if, has... if I can just put a number out there and it and it makes people notice and look into it and like just start questioning, oh, what does that number mean? I mean, I, I feel like that's automatically a win. So. Yep. So even if if it just makes someone interested in like why do you have a reaction to a specific number? There's something to that because the number has power. Yep, hundred percent, brother. And if you want to learn more about that number, just go to my uh, Chaldean, and that gives you just a taste of it. And then I'm coming out with a full breakdown. I I actually wrote the whole article. It's saved on my notepad over here. It'll be out probably uh, tomorrow, and that is right here. This article I wrote about the distortion of 666 in this energy. So what I'll do next is I'll take this article that I write out. I copy and paste it. I'm going to teach you guys some little hidden knowledge right now. Then you go run it through your Grammarly, right? Boom, boom, which I already did. Got to get that score up to 92, right? After that's done, you feed it to the AI. You go over to the AI and I'll have my AI, I'll, I'll say, rewrite this in a blog format so it's taking my wording my breakdown and then it'll rewrite it so that it's in a blog format so it's laid out properly for the seo and the algorithm to pick it up the best way it can on here you know it's just a tool we're utilizing just like grammarly is a tool the ai can be used for good as well um this this blog so i always start my blogs out on my notepad right I write them out, boom, 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 boom. Then I go run it over through Grammarly. Boom. Make sure everything's on point. So I'm not uh, the best at writing, but I have a lot of amazing, you would think I'm a, a phenomenal writer by the techniques I use. That's because I run it through Grammarly and then I run it through my AI to make sure everything's on point. But it's all coming right out of Tommy's head. Or So you got to research. You can't just have AI write you an article because it will lie, won't it, uh, Paranoid? Yeah, I mean, the way the, the AI actually works, it's it's not that, I mean, it's complicated on a math level, but the way that it's actually working is that it does it word by word, and it just tries to figure out 
what the next word it writes would make the most sense. But it also means that it currently what we're talking about, like chat GPT four, even the most advanced one, it doesn't yes. really like look ahead and form a conclusion and then like form arguments and build logic around it. It just starts throwing words out. It's almost like if you just had diarrhea of the mouth and you were a really good liar, you would just be talking all the time. But eventually people would realize you're just making it all up as you go. And that's yes. kind of what chat GPT four <laughs> is. Or like it'll sprinkle some real facts in every once in a while, but if you ever try to get it to do a long, deep conversation currently, then yeah, it just it just makes stuff up and you can't really trust anything that comes out of it factually. But if you tell it, here are the facts and here's how I want you to rephrase it for me, that I think is a very valuable way to use AI. Yes, this is how I use AI. So I'll I'll tell it, rewrite this in blog form. Boom. Now here's the blog I already wrote. Boom, I'll feed it to it. Boom. Then I see what it writes up and I see if I like that form, it redid it in. Sometimes I like my original writing of it better, right? But you see how it's writing it in blog format. So it's all my breakdown, my thoughts, my wording, because I already trained it. I trained these prompts. So it stays with my same wording, my same tone, right? But it's just putting it in the blog format. It can be an amazing tool if used right. So see how it's doing that, guys. And then it's making sure there's no spell. Um, there's there's no spell errors. There's no the sentence and, and, and ev the structure of it is better. Uh, you can even tell it. Make sure that this it can be understood on a sixth grade level, which unfortunately most people can only understand up to uh, they even say go lower than that to third grade level, which is crazy to me that people can only understand on that level. Uh, you know what I mean? So I always use sixth grade, but they say go as low as third and it'll actually make your, your articles do even better because people can understand them better. But um, yeah, there's just little hints like, or, you know, little tips like that to use. Now, one that's phenomenal that can write an article directly. You don't need a, this is a new AI I'm using. It's called write sonic. And you could go to write Sonic and go to like an AI article writer, right? So check this out, guys. This is really cool, man. Um, let's pick an article. We could just pick one, a news article for an example. I wanted to show this to Paranoid anyways. So say you got a website and there's a trending news story that you want to share on your website for your people, but you can't go copy and paste this article. You'll get flagged. You'll get flagged and, 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 and hit for copyright infringement. You can't just steal someone's article and post it like that. So what you can do is this. Watch this. Take this article. Copy it. Take it over here. Put it in here. Paste. Already have keywords. Enter your keywords here. If you want certain keywords that you want it to um fine this is the, the for the keywords so you can have it search keywords for that article sorry we couldn't not find relevant keywords let me go down to my rewrite article part that's the one i want to show you article rewriter here it is all right let's put that link in there bam oh my balance is getting low i gotta refill it uh generate let's see if i got enough balance to generate this article yeah, how many uh, credits is? Oh, it, it charges per word. Okay. Yeah, but it starts out with a lot. I've wrote a few um, already. So, creating successful business plan requires what the hell? This ain't even the right article. What did it write this one for? Well, that's a bad example. Did the vending machine just eat your quarter? <laughs> yeah, I think it ate my quarter, dude. Um, but it actually writes some really cool articles if, if you find the right thing. Cause I had it do one last night. That was pretty cool. Um, I didn't use it cause I'm just learning about this one. So I'm trying to figure it out. I, this it, might be, the, I might be using the wrong tool here. Actually. I, think I was going to say, it, it seems like there's 20 of these tools that come out every single week, man. It's, it's hard to keep track of how, how quickly they're coming out. It's evident that the use of technology in classrooms have numerous advantages. One of the most prominent benefits of utilization. Yeah, so this is writing. A, this is a different one. This is an article rewriter. They have different ones. Instant article re rewriter 
AI blog titles, paragraph writer, uh, sonic editor, AI article ideas. AI, you know what I'm saying? I can't remember the exact one I used last night, but it was way better. You could actually... I think it's this one maybe, but you put the link in there and it'll rewrite the article in your exact words. Like I said, I'm, I'm still learning this one, guys, so I haven't figured it all out yet. Um, I will, though. I will master this bitch and then I will. <laughs> I will. I will. Watch me. Oh, yeah. Search. Art. I think it's this one. Yep. This is it. Here it is. Sorry, guys. OK, so see this. Biden calls for Hamas to be eliminated. So I could pick up to 10 of these, but I don't have enough credits to pick 10 of them. So let's pick one next. Now, what do I want it to do? Okay. Rewrite this in my own words. So it's not recognized by Google as a duplicate. That's a prompt. You got to give it the prompt, whatever you want it to do. Now watch this. This one's way better than chat GPT, bro. As far as writing blogs and articles. Please, 10 articles for reference. Oh, duh. Why is it doing that? One third both. Cancel this one. I don't think I have enough credits. Son of a bitch. That sucks. I wish I would have had enough credits to show you guys, but I used all my credits, I think. Yep, I did. Because it needs 2,000 of them. And I only got 1,300 left. But I'll put some on tomorrow and do a live and show you guys a couple cool breakdowns on it. How it can pull up different articles. The reference point. Then it'll reference the articles at the bottom. It'll write out the whole freaking thing. So it'll take that article and rewrite this whole article in your own words. The whole thing. And then that article can be original to your website. So you're sharing the same exact story that they shared here, but it, it, it can't be hit for copyright infringement because it's original to your website. So it's pretty cool, man. Um, these tools can be used and utilized for the right way, right? I don't really know too much about doing it this way. I just learned this last night. The way I like doing it it's like I taught you here. You just write your, your ideas out, do your research, find out what you want to write about, then run it through your Grammarly, then go over to your chat GPT-4 and boom, tell it what you want and, and, and rewrite it like that. And then it puts your same breakdown right there. Boom, boom. You would copy it, go throw it in over here, make sure your Grammarly up to point on it and, uh, that's pretty much it. Then you would put it on your website. You know, so it's just a tool, just like Grammarly. Check what, oh, that's a good score too. So you would go through it, make sure it didn't change a bunch of your shit to what you don't want. So, I mean, that pretty much is my exact article because I know what I wrote. So it's pretty much my exact article. It just put it in different, wrote it in blog format meaning that it'll get a good SEO. So if you go over here and put new post right there and then took this, copied it, boom, right? Put it in here, paste, okay? Now see this score right here, guys? That's your SEO. Most people don't know about this. You need to get that as close to 100 as you can. That's going to help you get your search results on Google and, and all these search engines. So how you title it matters. And then you go down here and your keyword phrase matters. So whatever you title it, you want to make sure that keywords are going to um, pop up. That's how your search results happen, right? So you, you want to get all this to 100. And these are all plugins I've used where I've plugged in AI to my website to help you to, to, to help get my um, blogs uh, researched or, or found on, on the algorithm better, better SEO and keyword phrases. That's all that is. And then how these videos get pulled is I got it all each video, each content creator that I put up here my AI pulls their video in real time. So they drop a video, my AI pulls it, transcribes it, writes everything they said in it, 
writes a summary of the exact wording that's said during the podcast. And then it cost me $2 and 60 cents a video to do that. So I pay for that out of my pocket and boom, then I put it over here. So the only thing I got to do is come over, put the, the title's already in there. I just got to put the key phrases in and then boom, we're good to go, which I'm working on an AI right now. That's going to rewrite all the key phrases for me. So all that will be done automatically and I won't have to do it. So when someone like paranoid American or J dreams drops a new video, it'll just upload. I won't have to do it. I don't have to pay no one to do it. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool to utilize it for that type of stuff. Now, Come over here on truthfultv.com. The link is down in the description, guys, and get your reading today. You just go to my bookings right there. Or nope, I went to the wrong thing. Sorry about that. That's for my bookings. Um, go up here. Go to book online right there. And we got a bunch of um, availabilities. I actually got this girl, too, I'm looking for. Uh, Katrina O-L-B-E-S. If you're out there, honey, I can't find your email and your reading's done. So I need to send your reading over to you. Um, so if you could message me at truthfultv at proton.me, P-R-O-T-O-N dot M-E. I did your reading. I did your reading the first day you signed up for it. I just didn't have your email for some reason. I don't even know how I got your name for the reading. I can't remember, but I can't find your email. So uh, hopefully you hear this and hit me up. You just hit check availability, guys, and you can check out as a guest over here. So you don't have to have PayPal or none of that. Boom, you hit 920 on that, hit next. And this, we break down your life path number, your birth card, your destiny cards, your gamatria, all that. And right now, I've been getting them back pretty quick to people. I'm working on some... Um, backed up ones too. You see how my date of birth's in there? You know, this is just a test one, but you put your date of birth down here, your first, last name, all that, hit book now. It'll walk you through, show you step by step. It's it's pretty easy. Um, I'll just show you real quick how you check out as a guest. Boom, boom, go to continue. Place order and pay. See right here, pay with debit card. So go to pay with debit card. We don't want to use that one because that's my email. You should send that to sweetie. Truthful TV at proton.me. Then go to continue payment, continue as guest. That simple. Bam. Then it's a secure payout. And this is on truthfultv.com, which is different than truthmafia.com. People get that confused. They're two totally different sites. All right. We have our conspiracy cinema podcast stuff over here until we get done with conspiracycinema.com. Then everything will be up on there. But there's all the videos over here. So you can check out our whole catalog. Um, I got a bunch of new ones I got to get up as well. But yeah, man, uh, just had to plug that real quick and walk people through it. You know, Paranoid American, it's crazy, bro. If you don't walk them through it, though, some of them get lost, bro. You wouldn't, a mat, you, you couldn't believe how many people message me like, Tommy, I don't know how to book a reading. And I walk them through it all the time. And I still, but some people, I guess, ain't tech savvy, right? Well, not just that, man, but I mean, I, I would consider myself tech savvy, but when someone tells me to go and like use a new website or a new app that I haven't used before, like it doesn't mean that you just automatically know how to use it and where all the buttons are. So I, I can, I can relate. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I can relate. <laughs> no, yeah, it's definitely better to walk people through the step and show them how to do it. It definitely, I notice when I do that. I get a ton of bookings after a podcast. And when I don't do it and I just tell them, go book a reading, I get literally almost none. So I see the difference when I actually walk them through it and notice um, a huge difference. Um, reading. Alexander, when did you book yours? Yo, Tommy, do you have my info for my reading? I'm a Diamond member. Um, did you just book yours recently? 
because I got a whole bunch I'm working on right now. I got like probably 15 of them on that notepad. I got a bunch I got to send over uh, in the morning to people. So yours might be um, on there. A few days ago. Yeah, I probably haven't done yours yet. I think I know who you are, though, bro. So um, I think I'm working on yours right now, uh, Bryce. Shout out to my boy, Eric, too. Eric, I noticed on my YouTube, dude, how many times you donated. And I, I don't thank you enough. You know, this dude donates all the freaking time. So thank you so much, brother, because without you, people like you, we wouldn't be able to do what we love. And I really do appreciate that. It means the world to me. And make sure you guys go over, support Paranoid American, help Frazzle Drip get out on the shelves. We need that out there, man. You know, let's get that out there to the people, guys. And that link, I said I was going to drop it in there, so I need to drop that. Hold on one second. Let me grab that again. Yeah, please. And, and while uh, while you're doing that too, I got another another cool little uh, announcement, I guess, that I could show off. Okay, there yeah, show it off, brother. We're, I'm gonna drop this in the comments right here. This is the uh, a yeah. new project I've been working on. This is the Hunter Biden party pack. It's uh, a <laughs> it's a limited edition, uh, kind of like little art. It's got some miniatures in it. They're all different. Uh, this one in particular has a Corona. It's got a little pair of panties in there. There's a gun. Uh, there's even like a little dime bag. I think it's got like hearts. I'm not sure what what pattern that is. It's a little dark. And it's a uh, little toy, you know, a little toy Hunter Biden party pack. So. That's right. They're, they're all a little bit different. It, just like it says right there, every party's different, and Hopefully they're also hand good. numbered. So Hopefully these are limited edition. That. What's that? I said. Hopefully we don't get in trouble for that. Are you allowed to show male um, breast on YouTube? Here, well, here we go. No, no, we're censoring them. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know, dude. YouTube is so freaking crazy with their thing. But that's hilarious right there. The Hunter Biden party pack. And these are, yeah, they're all hand numbered. Um, I'm only going to make, I don't know, maybe like 50, maybe 100 at the very, very most. Um, but they're, I've, I mean, like the first 30 are already reserved. So they're going to go pretty quick. And then the back's got um, like everything you would expect. It's got some nepotism facts. It talks about known income from barisma art sales book deals blackmail uh administrative discharge and then an actual warning from a lawyer that i consulted that said there's no hypothetical case where i'd advise you to sell paraphernalia over state lines if you were asking me which you are not because my original version was this was just going to be a crack pipe in here um which is why it says crack and meth sold separately but apparently that might be illegal so we, yeah, uh, apparently that could be illegal, <laughs> um, you know, which we'll leave this up on Rumble and in, in Facebook on YouTube. I'll just trim this end part out. That's all. I mean, I've already been prone the hell out of this on my YouTube channel and they've oh, have allowed you? it. Yeah, they haven't. They haven't dinged it. So I think oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I think you're good. I mean, you know, when it first came out on the laptop, they were dinging the shit out of it. If anyone even showed that picture, they were taking your whole page down, dude. Well, as we can see, this is an art parody project. This is yes, a parody art project. Parody Please don't project. kill me. Yeah, Please yeah, don't yeah. kill me. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you did not kill me over a joke. Yeah, it's just a joke. It's parody. And um, it's definitely hilarious. Uh, so, you know, Hunter Biden, he is definitely out there smoking big pipes and shit. Um, he's a weirdo, dude. You know, J uh, dreams didn't even know who he was, dude. Hunter Biden. He, he's the prodigal son, man. Mark my <laughs> word, bro. If He's going to come back and run for president and he's going to be the everyman. He's going to be the one that you want to have the beer with the most. Yeah, dude. Imagine if he became the president, that would be horrible. That would just show how disarrayed, our, I mean, how terrible our country is. If that dude became the president. If he becomes born again and then runs for president, yeah. Well, he'll become a born again Christian. That's what he'll do too. Yep. Watch, he'll become a born again Christian and then bam, he's president. They'll be like, "Oh, he's forgiven by God." You know, it's, he a, it's the prodigal faith. son story. And if you don't vote for him, then it means you don't believe in the prodigal son. Right. Yep. It's that whole. Yep. I, I guarantee it. I could see it. I can see that script. I can see <laughs> yeah. That script being writ in the simulation that we live in. This simulacrum. Uh, they probably already wrote that script and they're just going to get it out there. 
<laughs> that'll be coming to a theater near you and probably let me guess 2029 to 2030 maybe we'll see the hunter biden coming for presidency who do you think his running mate would be paranoid oh dude i guess it would be his niece <laughs> or maybe hillary's daughter what about hunter biden and hillary's daughter with i the think he's got better daughter? taste you don't think he's going for her i think he's got better taste than than chelsea Chelsea Clinton, she likes upside down crosses and shit. Miss Chelsea. I mean, the, all of them are weird, dude. You, you you know, when they're children of these elites, they turn out messed up and you you kind of feel a little bad for them. I mean, they're scumbags, but they, look what they grew up with, dude. And we've seen with this movie Society how the incest and all the... I mean, we're making jokes out of it, but it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, think of what they're going through as children. You know, it's not, it's kind of not really funny um, what they're going through. And shout out to this person for your donation. We thank you uh, so much. Amanda, Amanda Panda, is that your name? Okay. Shout out to you. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's definitely crazy. So go support Paranoid American guys. Show them some love over there. I put the link down in the, the comments there. I'm going to also throw that link for the frazzle drip i'm gonna go put it in the description of the youtube video and the facebook um it'll be up on truthmafia.com tomorrow so we Please. love y'all thank you guys for rocking out with us man we're out peace